thought I'd share with you a Stillwater damsel pattern that we fish out at Lake Davis and we have uh, we have really good luck with. This particular tie is going to be tied on a, a 2487 light scud hook. It's a Tempco hook. And uh, <clears throat> we tie it, whoops, <laughs> we tie it on on a, uh, whoa, on a size 10 or a size 12 hook. This particular hook is a size 12. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wrap down to the bend of the hook back here and then I'm going to build it up just a tiny bit. And the reason for building it up in the bend back here is because when I tie the marabou tail in, what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's elevated away from the bend so that when you're retrieving it or casting it, the tail doesn't wrap around the bend of the hook. If it does do that, then it really uh, hampers the, uh, the quality of the retrieve. And if you get a hit with a fly tangled like that, <laughs> you're pretty lucky. It's one of your, it must be your birthday. Anyway, we're using a J Fair Marabou, and this is an olive. It's a little bit lighter olive than uh, what we normally tie with. Most of the, of the flies that I tie for fishing that Lake Davis damsel hatch are really a uh, sculpin green. And the sculpin green looks like this. Again, a J Fair Marabou. And it's really, they seem to hold this color the longest, but I'm getting low on these flies. So that's why I'm going to tie it. We get back here to the bend, and we're going to go ahead and take a couple of wraps behind the uh, tail. And come on. And uh, then bring it forward. And you can see that kind of lifts it. It elevates that tail, so it keeps it out of the... Uh, out of the bend of the hook when you're retrieving. Okay, we'll go ahead and clip this off. The colors that we use are basically three colors over there. The olive green that we're tying here, the sculpin that I just showed you, and the other color that we use is a light brown. And that looks like that. And that really does a pretty good job of uh, covering pretty much the damsel hatch. The light wire hook that we're using is nice because number one, it imparts a little bit more movement to the fly. Number two, it's got a fairly wide hooking gap on it, so the hooking ability of the uh, fly is really pretty good. What I'm going to do now is tie in a little bit of uh, crystal flash, and I do this maybe on 50% of my damsels that I tie. The reason for tying in the crystal flash, <clears throat> is there are a couple of reasons. Number one, the damsel generally comes off when the water's, uh, when the when the uh, sun is out, kind of those bluebird days, and what we found is that if you have a little bit of extra, if they're not hitting without the crystal flash, and you've got that light, why not go ahead and tie something on a little bit different? Got to remember when these damsels are hatching at Davis, you're competing with a heck of a lot of damsels, so those fish have a pretty good choice. If you can tie a fly. It's got something on it just a little bit different, like that crystal flash, reflective quality. You may just you may just take a fish because of it, or because you have a feeling that you may take a fish, you may just take a fish. <laughs> we're tied on the foam. It's a closed cell foam, olive. And what we're doing, the reason we're tying that in is for the buoyancy factor. We really want to uh, create a fly that's going to stay in the uh, top surface of the water column. And the closed cell foam definitely helps to, uh, to get the fly up there. That's where when the damsels are hatching, they're generally within that top one, two feet of water. And they also come into the shallow water, which is really the most fun because you can, uh, you can really sight fish. And sight fishing for these big Lake Davis trout is hard to beat. <laughs> Uh, now what we're doing is we're tying in the eyes, and what I like to do is I just use a little bit of monofilament, and the monofilament that I use uh, works very well, and the reason I use it is because whenever I go out to the lake and see damsels in the water, the first thing I always seem to notice is those eyes, the head and the eyes. So there are a lot of ties with... Uh, of uh, damsels that people don't use the eyes and I don't think you really need to tie the eyes in but it's just something uh, 
it's just something I like to do so so I go ahead and tie it in if you do decide to go with the eye what you want to be sure and do is tighten it down the other thing is that you want to uh, make sure that you don't make the eyes too wide because if you do that what will happen is when you're casting the fly the leader will actually spin and once the leader spins <clears throat> that's going to foul your presentation and that's no good so tie them in tight give yourself enough room so that when you pull the phone back you have room to uh, to uh, get it over the top of the head there and what we'll do what I also like to do is I'll go ahead and add a little bit of head cement. And the reason for the head cement again is uh, the fly is pretty durable, but <laughs> the eyes the eyes do have a tendency to uh, move on the hook. And if you've been into a couple of fish, you may find that your eyes are moving to one side or the other side. So if you use the uh, head cement, what that does is it just makes it a little bit more secure and a little less likely to go ahead and uh, and do that. So we've got the eyes cemented in. <clears throat> Next thing we'll do is put the cap back on the on the head cement. Every year this that bottle dries out on me. It doesn't matter how I store it or where I keep it. It just seems to seems to happen, even with thinner. Okay, I'm going to pull back towards the tail again. Whoops, not quite that far. Back in here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dub in a body. And what I want to do is I want to keep that body as slender as possible. The damsel is swimming in the water. Um, looks nothing like a dragonfly. That dragonfly has that really bulky look. The damsel is much more slender. So for that reason you really want to try and keep your tie as slender as possible. A lot of the damsels I see tied tend to be a little bit too bulky. <clears throat> Go ahead and pull that and get her set up for us. As far as the retrieve on the damsel that really can vary. What you're going to find is that some days they'll hit a fast retrieve, other days they'll hit a slow retrieve, some days they'll just hit the flies it drops in the water. So <laughs> the only thing you can do with that is just continue to you know try different things until you get that hit and then stick with it. The uh, other thing as far as the color, I mentioned that there are three colors that we tie, the brown, the olive green, and the sculpting green. As far as which which you go with. I think what you're going to, the best way to do this is uh, when you're out at the lake, just look at the color of the water, the color of the weed beds, and you can rest assured that the damsels in the water are going to blend in with that color because that's really their only protection is their camouflage. They're not heavy, they're not fast swimmers by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, so they re re really rely on that coloring to give them the uh, protection that they need. Okay, I'm going to tie in the foam head right now. We pull it over the top of the eyes. I do a loose wrap initially, then I come back and tighten it up a little bit. You've got to be careful with the uh, closed cell foam because if you if you go too tight on it with your tying thread, you can actually uh, cut right through it. The next thing I'm doing is pulling back the crystal flash, and we're pulling that back, centering it over the top of the fly, and getting that position. And finally what we'll do is we'll pull this forward, get out our scissors, and we want to clip it kind of right behind the head of the fly. So we'll pull out the crystal flash, maybe. The next thing we'll do is we'll pull forward the closed cell foam and give it a cut. And what you do when you cut off the foam like that is you create a little ridge behind the head of the fly and that ridge sticks up almost over the top of the head so that when you're retrieving the fly you get a little bit of resistance from the ridge and you get a little bit of extra movement in the fly. The other thing that you can do, and as far as creating the, mimicking the movement of the damsel in the water, I've yet to seen a tie that actually does that. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a side to side motion and it really is incredible. But any movement that you can get in your fly I think you're going to find is going to be uh, beneficial as far as attracting fish to uh, to take the fly. The other thing that you can do is you can actually you can actually uh, tie down that whoops tie down that uh, that lip so that it, that it uh, folds into the taper of the natural body of the uh, damsel. You keep that taper nice and thin, and at that point you're really relying on the tail here to give you the movement that you need. So uh, 
those are the two options. I'm going to come back and tie her off at the head. Whoops, tie her off at the head. And we'll just put a couple of half hitches in there. The fly is really simple to tie, and that's one of the nice things about the fly is that you know you don't need to spend a lot of time on it. The uh, setup I use when I'm fishing the damsels is generally I'll use a seven weight rod. I know seven weight sounds a little heavy, but the nice thing about a seven weight rod, these fish out at Lake Davis are big fish. <laughs> they really are, and they're high energy fish as well. So with the seven weight rod, what it allows me to do is it gives me much more control over the fish. I can turn the fish if the fish dies down into the weeds or any other objects on the bottom of the uh, lake. You can generally uh, turn them and get them away from that, which is a big benefit. And then finally, the nice thing about going with a little heavier rod like that is that uh, you get the fish in much more quickly. And the more quickly you get that fish in, the faster you get the fish in, the, uh, the better the chances the fish has of survival. So you're not tearing them out and burning them up. So that's my uh, reason for going with the 7 weight. I have a real nice limus that I use and I really like that I got from a very good friend. And uh, as far as the setup on the line, a floating line is generally what we use. A floating line uh, with a 10-12 uh, foot leader, we go down to about a 4x tip and I wouldn't go too much uh, lighter than 4x. The fish are not really uh, leader spooky. They really aren't. You can be pretty we, we fished, you know, 3x before um, when you're breaking them off on 4. But if you go to a 5 or a 6, you really have to be careful because the, uh, the possibility of breaking a fish off greatly increases. And there's nothing more frustrating than breaking a fish off after you put so much time, time into getting him. Uh, as far as tying the fly on, it's a good idea to use a, a Duncan's loop. And the nice thing about the Duncan's loop is that it imparts extra movement to the fly. Again, movement in your fly is really key. So having that loop as opposed to using a clinch knot or something along those lines really allows the fly to, to, to move a little bit more freely. freely. And uh, in that way, you're, uh, you're more likely to go ahead and get a hit. Again, it's a real easy tie, very quick uh, to go ahead and put together. And I think you'll find it'll be very effective over there in Lake Davis. The three colors, the brown, the, the olive green, and the uh, sculpting green should cover you up nicely along with the sizes, the size 10 and size 12. I leave the tail just a little bit long and the reason I do that is because when I get out to the lake and see the damsels in the water, I can go ahead and cut it back to whatever length the actual damsel in the water is. Uh, I've played around with you know going a little bit bigger than the, than the hatch or a little bit smaller than the hatch and I found that really doesn't seem to make a big difference. So I normally try and go to size on the uh, live damsels. The thing that does make a difference is you really got to pay attention. If you can target fish, hit fish, anticipate which direction they're going, and then give it the retrieve that you need, uh, your chances of, of you know hitting one of these fish is pretty good. And there's nothing like a Lake Davis trout on a damselfly in shallow water that uh, it's just awfully hard to beat. So I hope this helps. Goodbye.